And welcome back to part 3, folks. As I mentioned last time... Well, that was a bummer. That was an unfortunate start to the episode. Seeing two innocent guards get gunned down. But as I mentioned last time, we're gonna be using some more stealth techniques this time around to take out our enemies. And uh, I could explain that, but I think Oracle is going to do that for us. So let's listen up for a second. Oracle, Joker's men have taken control of the cell block transfer corridor. That's not good. I patched into a guard radio. It sounds like Joker's crew have got their hands on weapons. I know. I'll calibrate the cowl's vision mode to isolate armed henchmen. The direct approach is suicide. I like how apparently Batman has never found himself in this situation before. He has to, you know, find an alternate way to use the detective mode for armed henchmen or armed criminals. As if he's never faced somebody with a weapon before. But whatever. So, in detective mode, as we just heard, all enemies that are armed will be bright red. And that's incredibly useful. But as I mentioned last time, I like not overusing detective mode in this game just because I think the game looks so, so well. And uh, yeah, I'll do my best, but as you'll see on the sequences coming up, sometimes it's just unavoidable and it's the way the game is meant to be played, I guess. Um, anyhow though, the reception on my very first videos practically has been incredibly kind and useful to me from both uh, different forums or subreddits and uh, a few discord servers for let's play newcomers that I've been uh, I guess a member of now oh look who it is are your pointy ears burning I'll kind of let the joker interactions on the screen slide because you know Again, not trying not to talk over him or interrupt him, as I'm doing right now, which is incredibly cool. But I think they add to the game so much, I guess more than just regular commentary of mine would. Whatever. Anyhow, <laughs> I'm just talking shit for no reason, right? I'm, I'm not talking about anything. Um, this is the part that I mentioned the game is separated into other than the brawls. We're entering our first predator challenge and uh, I'll show off what we've learned by leveling up not too long ago. As you can see the room is huge all of a sudden. It's not just a corridor that's, you know, barely even useful on a map. It's a very big room and every enemy that you encounter in rooms like this will be armed. So you can't just fight them like we could when we were walking the halls of the asylum. You know, again, in the story, Joker's crew got a hold of the weapons, which is, you know, again, fairly convenient to increase the difficulty of the game. But in that way, they've separated the game into different sections. So now you can, you know, uh, take use of glass ceilings like you just saw, or new abilities that we've learned like the inverted takedown. And uh, yeah, I enjoy these very much. This is actually really cool. I wanted to go for a silent takedown, but because I wasn't crouched and, you know, unconveniently, I guess, the enemy turned around exactly at the same time and he actually got startled. If you're not lucky like I was, he'll just start shooting and pretty much down you immediately. I didn't mention that if you get shot, you'll die so fast that you won't even believe it on any difficulty. Obviously it kind of ramps up the higher you go in the difficulty settings, but it's never a good idea to fight an armed enemy, especially if he can see you already. When you take an enemy down, in whatever fashion I mentioned, uh, the other enemies in the room will automatically run to that place, because Joker will er alert them that they've been killed. And uh, yeah, you want to move away as soon as possible. And I think it's cool to... M I not. I, I mean, I guess not cool to mention. But useful to mention that going just to the nearest gargoyle 
isn't useful enough because they'll still be able to see you that way. You have to move around the room quite a bit for them to lose you, which again ramps up their field of vision with the difficulty. Now we have the ability to turn around upside down on gargoyles and uh, use inverted takedown, which both looks really cool and is really, really fun to use. And also, if you cut the enemy that you've just strung up with a better rank, when another enemy is inspecting his body, you'll earn a missable achievement. Just repeat what I did on the screen. It's a very easy trick and it nets you an achievement that some people have trouble with. I believe it's called Ropa Dopa Dope. So, yeah. Looking at the global achievement ratings, it's one of the least earned ones, and it's so simple and can be gotten through the entire game. Anyhow though, um, since this is the second wave of enemies, and we see a shiny interview tape on the floor, let's try to take out two birds with one stone. This can me mess you up though, but let's listen first. Alright, so it turns out Joker's amazing with the ladies, right? Anyhow, uh, because your run command, at least on the platform I'm playing on, and the pickup command for the collectibles is the same, which is space, um, if you try to run away immediately as you take down that enemy, you'll automatically pick up the collectible instead. And that can definitely mess you up spatially, you know what I mean? Uh, both because the animation of the takedown has occurred and you've tried to start to run, you'll pretty much be inverted and if there happens to be a collectible nearby and you pick it up, when you come back to the gameplay itself, uh, you might get caught because of that. So at least in this very specific, specific part of the game, you should be wary of that. Also these grates on the floor that I'm standing above right now, you can enter. Uh, walk below the henchmen, pop out, and uh, take them out silently. That's not something I show off here because I don't think it's particularly useful because most henchmen that do roam the office area, you know, uh, can be taken out easier ways. Uh, like the ceiling, for example, what you saw two or three times. Joker must have figured out how I was tracking Gordon. Officer Bull's trail stops here. So when I first played the game, this part in particular was just seemingly incredibly dark to me. You know, just because an officer goes bad, you know, you don't expect them to kill them in such a gruesome way. I don't know, that's just me I guess. But, Edward Nygma shows up. He's also very funny and uh, talks to you through the entire game, if you decide to embark on the journey of collecting all his secrets and challenges that he's laid out throughout the as asylum. Uh, I guess not just the asylum, but the Arkham Island too. But be careful, don't cut yourself on this sharply observed portrait. So because this is the first Riddler challenge, or the riddle, I guess, um, he'll talk to you as you try to solve it. And if you didn't notice the sharp portrait on the wall, yeah, it was really easy. But if you wait long enough, you know, just walking around being clueless, he'll actually say, 
Jesus Christ, it's the portrait on the wall, please. <laughs> you know, it's it's actually hilarious. So, uh, but now that we've done with all that, and we've solved our first riddle, uh, there's a couple more that we can find here. We've picked up the interview tape in the office while in combat, which was unfortunate. We've solved that riddle, and uh, I think it's time I show off the last type of riddles that you'll encounter throughout the game. These are definitely my least favorite, just because they're not programmed as well as they could be. Um, you'll have to have detective mode permanently on for you to even notice the riddles, which in itself is, I believe, bad design, but at the same time it's a cool idea. See, you'll have these different question marks uh, that you can notice in two different areas. Sometimes they'll be you know, the dot on the ground and the question mark on the vantage points, so you'll have to get really high up sometime. And sometimes they'll be through a window behind the wall like you just saw. But the alignment of the question mark is pretty hard to notice or figure out how they intended. Bulls came walking in telling everyone to cover the front entrance. Said something about Joker's army coming through the main gate. Two of my guys moved to the exit, and Frank shot him dead. They never stood a chance. Was Bowles alone? Thought he was. Then I saw Harley Quinn. She was surrounded by Black Gate prisoners. They were just killing everyone in the room. I had no choice. I, I got in here, locked the door. I, I could see it on the security feed. They had someone with them. It looked like the commissioner. Bowles is dead. They carried on without him. Must have outlived his usefulness. Good. You a scum. All right, so Officer Bowles was I'll taken out, Maria. and uh, looks like we don't need to be in the asylum anymore, which was fairly fast. We can't pick that Riddler trophy up just yet, like most of them. <laughs> so let's just run along. Um, I tend to talk about the collectibles a lot, just because that's the way I enjoy playing video games. I like imagining a roadmap in my head. Uh, to go through to collect everything as I can, but, you know, I apologize if you're more of a casual, have fun type. <laughs> when I say it out loud, it sounds like, yeah, I really do play video games in an unfun manner, but I don't know, I, I think it's, I think it translates into different areas of my life as well. I'm just kind of a perfectionist about the things I'm passionate about, I guess. But, here's a radio transmission from Jack Ryder. If you're a fan of Batman, you'll recognize him from the comic books. And, uh, he's not only a radio personality, he's also a part-time, uh, small-time villain. But, there's really no point to talk about Jack Ryder in this game, right? If you care, you can read his bio, of course. Anyhow, though, scanning the radio is another riddle that you can miss. But with that, we've pretty much covered everything we can do inside the asylum uh, in this area of the island. So for the first time, let's actually go on the outside, which I think will show off what I mean when I say how beautiful and aesthetically pleasing to look at the Arkham Island is. I'll probably take a screenshot of it myself and use it for my thumbnail because I'm not a graphic designer. I'm just a dude who can press print screen on a keyboard. <laughs> Anyhow though, we'll see how the... Throughout this game, you'll see how well the cave systems and everything uh, is connected to the island. I'm not sure what I was trying to get out. I, uh, man, sometimes I think to myself, I'm a really well articulated, eloquent guy. And then I try to speak or hold a monologue like this for 20 minutes, and then I press pause at the end of the day, and I'm just bummed out. Some people are really, really good at doing this, you know what I mean? And I'm just a dude sitting in his chair. And I should be doing some programming for my upcoming finals. But instead, I'll dedicate the next 10 minutes of my life to collecting Riddler trophies. 
in a game about Batman for probably the fifth time in my life <laughs> on different platforms too. Anyhow though, we're now in Arkham East. When you jump over cliffs, uh, if you hold your jump button, whatever platform you're playing on, you can glide. It's pretty useful, but also if you glide for a long distance, you'll earn another miserable trophy. And uh, again, you can get it so many times throughout the game. And it's really simple, it takes 30 seconds to get, maybe less, depends how long you want to glide for. But uh, this is the first sandbox area, I guess. So this game takes place on Arkham Island and as you can tell by the map whenever it pops up. It is kind of a free roam-esque game, right? If she still got Gordon There's there, he a vague hurt. illusion okay, of you having a choice where you go, but you're still no led on a straight north. path. You so you can pretty much skip out all on all the things you don't enjoy north. other than the story, Thanks, which horrible. is really convenient, right? But at the same time, you can explore the entirety of the island, and it's separated into Arkham East, North, and West. So naturally, these big areas, big open areas, I guess, have a lot of trophies and riddles to collect. So I think we'll have a little collect-a-thon um, here as we've just encroached on our first large open area. I'm being really lazy here. All you have to do is scan it <laughs> where there's, you know, actually no fence. But... Gotham's greatest family towers over the city. And we unlocked the bio for Bruce Wayne from that. I forgot to mention how much XP you actually get by doing this. You not only explore every nook and cranny of the island and see how beautifully the game was designed, which I, I guess keep harping on about, but the XP you gain is monumental, actually. But I think there's, uh, yeah, another another recording here that we need to encrypt decrypt i guess so let's take a listen let's find out who is the soul My of family's arkham family's blood ran through the heart of gotham we were doctors politicians and teachers we have been the organ cleaning the arterial filth from the city we have been its servants giving all to protect it and still it has chosen to hurt us what I really like about the Chronicles of Arkham is how, well, for one, you don't know who the recordings are of. So as you progress through the game, and because you can't collect all of them right at the start, because that would be horrible, horribly designed, you don't know who this very strongly opinionated person about crime is. And the more you listen, you realize, I don't know whether I agree with this guy or not, and I don't know who it even is. Like, have we met him in the game? Uh, I guess you'll see what I mean a little bit later on as we uncover more recordings. But I think it's super, super interesting what they've done with that specific collectible. You know, uh, they make you have genuine doubt in somebody who calls himself the spirit of Arkham and uh, has chosen to take over the legacy of Amadeus Arkham to clean out the city from crime. I think that's something that the DC Universe in general does well. Uh, it really detaches its heroes from humanity and human elements. And you really wonder on whose side you're on specifically when you watch uh, some, or read for that matter, some D DC media. I think that Marvel is incredibly successful just because everybody can pretty much relate to every superhero Marvel has in different ways. I just realized I can't really pronounce Marvel. Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, uh, yeah, I think that Marvel is super successful because of that. You know, they choose to use more, I guess, cartoonish, uh, humoristic tropes when it comes to their media where DC focuses on the more serious, dark, psychological aspects. I mean, let's not get into this debate, don't get me wrong. I think that the films that we have going on right now as we're recording this, you know, uh, The Dawn of Justice, Justice League, 
that are out currently. I think they're awful. Don't get me wrong. Even as as a big of a fan completed. of Batman and Superman and all the other favorites from DC, you know, The Flash, obviously. I am. I still can't get behind those movies. And I really hate when somebody who is just a fan, and just because they're a fan, they try to justify all the mistakes and just bad writing when it comes to those films. And, it, and it's a bummer, because games like these and so many graphic novels prove how successful and exciting a specific superhero franchise could be. And because we're in the golden age of it, I don't know, you see films like Thor Ragnarok and you see the potential of these heroes that aren't completely explored or even loved, you know, like Spider-Man or Batman is. And then you see what somebody creates and they have everything on their platter. Right? They have the entire Justice League and they don't do anything with it, right? Other than Wonder Woman, who do you fuck with? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> who's your boy on the Justice League? Like, that whole, their whole, I, I guess, story so far is let's, let's get together, let's fight, let's have some drama, and then in the end, Let's befriend Superman again and let him solve all our problems because he is literally a god. Yeah, that's always funny to me, you know? But, you know, whatever. I digress. Uh, not the biggest fan of the movies, but the games are excellent, right? And if you have the chance, you know, you're debating, ah, oh, should I pick up the new Blu-ray? version of Justice League or any DC film or should I pick up you know a game of the year edition of one of the Arkham games you know especially when they're so cheap nowadays I think honestly that you know you should just play the games because in my opinion what we're seeing on the screen right now in the theaters I refuse to accept as official DC canon you know what I mean anyhow Let's listen to the first Joker thing. Tech Nation interview. Subject has no recording name, alias listed as the Joker. In the room is Warden Sharp and myself, Dr. Young. Oh, uh, is this another one of those boring psych evaluation tests? No, it's not. So, you're the famous Joker. In the flesh. So, Doc, do you want me to look at the ink blots again? The first one is a kitten I had when I was a child. The second is... So the joke is still hilarious. Absolutely love him. <laughs> I was actually cracking up as we, as we were listening to those. Anyhow though, um, everything we've done in the past 8 minutes has netted us, you know, a lot of XP, a lot of collectibles, but again it's not necessary. But because I like to focus my videos on really the completionist rating when it comes to games, uh, you know, both connected to its story, uh, I'll just have to do that every time we have a chance right and i think it's useful because i watched a lot of let's plays and even video series that call themselves guides and i didn't see a lot of them where they actually chronologically go through and get every collectible you can to really uh you know maximize the efficiency when it comes to playing the game in one run and i hope to change that because I think that's something that will separate this series from other Arkham Asylum series on YouTube. Anyhow though, uh, I'd like to ask you personally, so I've had this long diatribe about the DC Universe and Marvel and superheroes in today's world of cinema. What do you think about it? What do you think about the current, current happenings when it comes to the DC Universe on the big screens? Let me know. 
can't believe it. They killed Jackson. Stay with your colleagues. Also, I'm something that I didn't go over. Now. Since we did level up, um, I upgraded the Batman armor. And I'll show you what bullets do to it. Yep, they pretty much take out the entire upgrade in one go. Stand there for a few more seconds, you're immediately dead. You know, I didn't want my advice to fall on death ears when I said guns hurt, right? Anyhow though, thank you guys very much for watching. Frank Bowles has been killed, we've exited the Arkham Asylum into the island, and uh, we've collected a lot of trophies and riddles. Next time though, we have to protect the Batmobile and find Commissioner Gordon. See you guys then.